CDC has examined the data over the last several flu seasons and they were surprised to see that the efficacy or the effectiveness of the flu mist or the nasal vaccine actually was considerably less than the flu shot. And so they made the recommendation for this year's flu season to not give the flu mist. So that, that, that version of the flu shot has actually been taken away uh, and is not being offered this year. The regular flu shot, there's gonna be tens of millions of doses of that available. Uh, the few million doses that were available in the flu mist that have been taken offline should not really affect the availability of the flu shot. There should be plenty of doses of flu vaccine available uh, for the general public. It's the best tool that we have to prevent the flu. So if you don't wanna get the flu, get the flu shot. It's not a perfect vaccine, but on the average year, it's about 60 to 70% effective in preventing influenza. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that flu can be a very serious disease. And on an average year, about 25,000 Americans lose their lives due to flu or the complications of flu. Now, most of those deaths are in frail people, elderly people, folks with underlying cardiovascular disease or immunosuppressive disorders. But there are other people, you know, young healthy folks that get complications of the flu and go on to die. And those are a tragedy. In addition, what folks also need to understand is that even if you're young and healthy, you have about a 10 to 15 percent chance of getting a secondary complication of influenza. And what I mean by that is you might get sinusitis or an earache or bronchitis or in the worst cases you get pneumonia. Those are also serious diseases that cause you know, uh, morbidity and, and some degree of mortality if you get pneumonia. Most people who get the vaccine will have some very mild side effects or toxicity. So just about everybody who gets the shot will have a little bit of soreness at the site of the vaccine. Uh, some people will have some aches and pains, maybe even a little bit of low-grade fever. Most of those symptoms can be very much blunted by taking a little bit of Tylenol or a little bit of pain reliever, uh, Motrin or Ibuprofen. Uh, those will blunt those symptoms. Those side effects pale into insignificance compared to the symptoms that people have when they really have the flu. A uh, full-blown case of the flu puts people on their back for several days with high fevers, 102, 103 degree fevers, bad body aches, headaches, congestion, sore throat, really makes you feel bad and you're sick for days on end. And then sometimes it takes weeks to fully recover. Uh, so it's a serious illness that you can protect yourself from by getting the vaccine. The flu shot is a killed viral vaccine. So the components of this vaccine, there's just no way that it is able to actually transmit an active case of influenza to you. And so sometimes people get the flu shot and then a few weeks later they come down with some other respiratory virus and they say, doggone it, you know, the, the, that vaccine didn't do me any good. And it's not designed to protect against those other viral infections. So uh, sometimes people can you know, get confused by that. It takes about two weeks for your body to see the vaccine and respond to it and to develop immunity to the flu. So you wanna make sure that you get the shot early enough so at least two weeks go by before you start seeing flu in the community. Now after you get the vaccine, it lasts for probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about six months. So if you get the vaccine any time in the fall, starting you know, in September or October, it should take you through to the end of the flu season, which is usually sometime in the spring in March or April. Well, the, the vaccine has been given for decades now. It's an extremely safe and well-tested vaccine. There's really just no indication that, that this vaccine is linked to any kind of uh, serious kind of problems. So a lot of folks are trying to link uh, vaccines of all types to things like autism or other kinds of illness. Uh, there really just isn't any kind of linkage to those diseases. And those things have been looked for very, very carefully. But there's a lot of people where this can be a life-threatening illness. And those are the folks that we really want to protect uh, throughout society by making everybody get the vaccine. Women who are going to be pregnant during the flu season should definitely get vaccinated. Um, flu in pregnant women is just a devastating disease and unfortunately every year in our medical center we see tragic cases of babies that, that uh, die in utero 
or unfortunately babies that are sometimes born orphans because their mothers have died from the flu. So this is something that, that we really want to try to prevent. So if you're going to be pregnant during the flu season, this is a vaccine that is safe in pregnancy. You really do need to get that vaccine. Most of our vaccine is made in chicken eggs. And so people who have a allergy to eggs have been concerned by that. There's actually vaccine that's now made completely eggs free uh, through some other technologic developments. So people who have a severe egg allergy now can get the vaccine uh, without any risk of egg allergy. Also for folks who are older than 65 years of age, there's vaccine available that has a little bit higher antigen level. So in other words, it's been specially formulated for the immune system of old persons so that they can respond a little bit better to it and perhaps get better protection against the flu. So if you're older than 65 years of age, you may want to ask your doctor or your pharmacist about getting the vaccine that's specific for older people. There's also a vaccine now that has a uh, intradermal delivery. So it's a very, very small little minute needle. So people who are afraid of needles, they don't like that jab, they can actually get a vaccine now that uh, they almost won't feel.